Welcome back, everybody. Very happy to have you here. My name is Ryan Nemec. I'm the Education Director of the VA Institute on Character, and I'm here with my partner in crime, Ruth Pierce, who is the VA Product and Practice Development Consultant. And we're here in our space together. This is our space, your space, to be able to learn some more tools to be reminded of these great qualities that you have within you, to be able to bring them forth with yourself, with your family, and to the world at this very unprecedented time in our world history together. You know, our the tagline for these sessions is breathe, remember, connect. So we can, at these times, if we forget everything else, we can at least remember to as we've talked about, catch our breath. At least find the breath for a moment or two. Second, we can remember. And by that, we mean remember your character strengths. Remember always at the times of stress and at the times of good and bad, you have many different qualities of goodness within you to turn to. And then third, connect. So we have the opportunity to connect more deeply within ourselves, so intrapersonal connection. And we have the opportunity to connect with the people closest to us in our family and people outside of our family, to connect with people in ways we never have before, in new ways. So we're very glad that you're here because that means that you're taking action for yourself or for other people. So that's a wonderful thing. And this week, uh, we have three sessions on different character strengths, and we are focusing, uh, bringing in a little bit more um, deliberately more research. Everything that we talk about is uh, based in research, at least that's always the intention. Uh, today, we're going to be a little bit more deliberate as we were on Monday with curiosity, today with social intelligence, and then Friday with uh, a particular part of appreciation of beauty. So to set up social intelligence a little bit, you know, it doesn't get as much attention these days, I don't feel. You know, we're, we're putting quite a bit of attention, and rightfully so, on prudence and uh, self-regulation, kind of in a societal way. We're putting quite a bit of attention uh, on love and gratitude and, and hope, and these are all wonderful strengths to, to turn to. But I'm not hearing the word social intelligence come about very much. I'm not hearing a lot of people talk about that strength. And it's a crucial strength at this point. We really can't talk about it enough because it has to do with our emotions and our feelings right now, which are very important to be attending to. So if we just unpack what social intelligence is uh, for a moment, it's a really complex character strength. Uh, you know, a classic way to think about social intelligence is that it, a person who's socially intelligent or using that particular character strength can fit in in just about any scenario or situation. You know, they are fitting in with uh, the quiet man down the street, they're fitting in with the chatty neighbor, talking with them, the young child, the homeless person on the street, a group of business people in an uh, executive office, and so on. And so by fitting in with all those people, I mean the person is comfortable, or they're relatively comfortable in those different wide-ranging situations, and they're saying the right thing, or they're, they're saying things that are helping them to fit in. Uh, in some ways, to kind of align themselves and to connect, to learn, and so on. So if we think also about social intelligence, uh, you can ask yourself, you know, are you someone who really knows what makes people tick? You know what makes them tick, and then you can respond accordingly to that. You know, are you someone who's really comfortable talking about your feelings or emotions, same thing, feelings and emotions, and also talking about other people's feelings, you know, hearing what they have to say about what's going on within them and being comfortable in those situations. So these are some examples of social intelligence. Now, ironically, despite the word social being in social intelligence, it's quite an inward strength. 
you know, it's a very much an inward strength in terms of us really being centered within ourselves, tuned into our emotions and being able to, to know how to express them, to understand them. Uh, and then there is the social part about expressing them or trying to connect with other people. Uh, but it's quite an inward strength as well as we, as we think about it. And, um, you know, I just want to make the point, there are, you know, people who are very extroverted, very social, uh, who are not very socially intelligent. So just because somebody is, is a very kind of social person does not make them high in this particular character strength. You know, it might be the very quiet, introverted person who's uh, particularly socially intelligent. You know, everybody's different. So there's different scenarios with all these. It could be an introvert or extroverted. But now, <clears throat> it, this is a complex strength. So let's unpack it a little bit further. Um, so my unpacking is a reflection of what the VIA Institute says about social intelligence, what thought leaders like Dan Goleman has said about social intelligence and emotional intelligence, uh, what <clears throat> some of the uh, emotionally, uh, the, the, the people that study emotional intelligence, so the researchers and uh, the many practitioners and people getting certified in emotional intelligence say, <clears throat> as well as my work with my work, clinical work one-on-one -on -one with people with thousands of people. So kind of putting all of that together, I think of social intelligence in four general parts, you know, different pieces. And you can kind of think of yourself with each of these and see, you know, we can be stronger in some parts and then kind of maybe struggle with other parts. We can see where we might need to grow in our social intelligence. So one part is being aware of your feelings, being aware of your emotions. <clears throat> A second part is then being able to express those feelings and emotions. <clears throat> a third part is being tuned in and aware of what other people might be feeling. And then a fourth part is being able to respond accordingly to other people's feelings. Might be in some situations not to say anything, and in other situations to be able to respond with a, a certain amount of support or choosing the right words to acknowledge the person's feelings, letting them share, and so on. So there's those four general parts. And then we can, we can overlay, to make this a little bit more complex, the social level on these. So the social level <clears throat> has to do with both social awareness and social facility. So social awareness has to do with being aware of people's nonverbal communication, their body language. And if they roll their eyes, they might mean something by that. Or if they have a lot of tension in their face or their body or their body uh, is moving in a different direction. Um, it's being aware of certain, you know, the, the way that the, the social situations are laid out. These people are over here in this particular group, these people are talking to this person, this person's observing this person over here, this person's elevating their energy as when they talk to this other person. So it gets super complex, but that's all the social awareness, kind of the observing component. And then there's the social facility component, and that has to do with the action. You know, do you facilitate yourself socially in a way that, again, connects with others, helps you fit in, <clears throat> helps you support others, and so on? So that's that extra couple levels on top of the original four. But hopefully that doesn't seem too complex. But, you know, I, so I think of myself in, in this. I've, I, this is one of the strengths I kind of analyze to death when it comes to myself. And... Um, you know, for, for forever, probably for, it seems for myself, you know, probably for two decades, maybe, maybe three, I've thought of myself as pretty good on the social awareness component, pretty good at kind of observing the details and the nonverbals and picking up on things uh, that are happening socially and sensing what people's uh, underlying motivation might be or their need might be, their feeling might be and so on. Um, but I've never been very never thought of myself as being particularly strong on the facility side of, of kind of always saying the right thing and always uh, having the right words. You know, I've probably grown in that as a psychologist, become better on that, on that level. But uh, in terms of my area of growth, I think the, you know, getting more and more smooth, more and more um, strong with the facility part is maybe where my area of growth is. So, if, you know, at one point we tried to capture all the different character strengths in a very succinct way, like in just like a couple words, one word or a couple words or a phrase. So for social intelligence, the way that I framed that is it's tuned in, then savvy. 
It's a way that captures that strength, the strength. Tuned in, then savvy. So what that means is we're, it's those two pieces of awareness and facility. So we're tuned in to what's going on around us. We're aware. You know, no one can be aware of everything perfectly because social situations are far too complex to get every single nuance. And there's so many pieces of information coming at us, thousands and thousands of pieces of information. Um, but we're tuned in. We have a general sense of things. And then after that, we're savvy. We're, we're able to then say the right thing to, to socialize, to connect, to relate to people's feelings. So many times Ryan, people will, yes. Someone has asked, could you just say a word or two more about exactly what you mean by savvy? That's a very English colloquial. Right. It's what I was kind of just saying at the end there is that that's being able to say the right thing. So it's being able to be comfortable with, with one's words, with what one's saying to that particular person. So to be able to, to say the right thing in that particular situation, to be able to fit in, to be comfortable in that sense. Now, people will, will often say, um, will ask me, you know, where is empathy in the VIA classification? And, you know, it's a great question because empathy is a, a valued term uh, for, for the, you know, for, for a long period of time. And empathy is right here. It's right here in social intelligence because empath empathy means to be able to feel emotions, the emotions of others, to be able to share the emotions of others, to really be there with them in that sense. So when we're thinking about empathy, we're thinking about social intelligence. So a, a couple different tools now uh, on this topic of, so what, what do we do? How do we make sense of, of the different things that I've been saying so far? So in deal, the first tool is dealing with emotions. And, and so this is sort of a process that I uh, would lead clients through and many others would lead, lead, lead clients to as well. And I'll just make the point that, you know, this is a, a challenging strength because a lot of people who are low in social intelligence, they don't know what they don't know. So it's, it's a, it can be, it can be difficult for people to, uh, to, to build this up in a lot of ways, but, but there's ways that we can do it. And so I'll lead you through a process that's, that's, that many people have um, played around with. Um, you know, but to that last point, I remember there's a, um, a man in my meditation group uh, a few years ago, and I remember him saying, you know, he took the via, via survey and he saw that social intelligence was dead last for him. And he said, I, I just don't understand this particular strength. You know, I don't understand how it relates to me and, and what, and what it's all about, you know, can you explain it to me? And so then I sat down and I explained to him about emotions and being aware of them and sharing them and uh, knowing, noting them and others and making comments and being aware of social situations. And I'm doing this whole thing. And, um, you know, he just looked at me like I had, you know, horns coming out of my head, just didn't understand it, just didn't get it. And, and this is a, a smart guy. Um, and, uh, so, so I just kind of make the point that, that this stuff for, for some people can be very challenging and it's easier to just to chat, chat, chat about it. But it, it takes quite a bit of time to grow in social intelligence, to truly grow. And I and other psychologists know that in working with people with their feelings. It's not as simple as just, you know, we name the feeling and then that's it. It's, it gets really complex. So even what I'm about to say, um, trying to lay it out in a concrete way, uh, it still takes quite a bit of time to truly grow this particular character strength. So let's talk about it. So uh, the way that we can think about it is with social intelligence, we want to first name the feeling that we're having in our body. And then we want to apply basic psychology, which means to think, feel, and behave. So those are going to be the steps. We name it and then think, feel, behave. So, for example, it might all start with naming the feeling, I feel helpless right now in this particular time of the world. So then apply thinking and logic to try to understand it, to bring your cognitive abilities to the feeling that you're having. And this is so, each of these steps is so important, that understanding part, the logic part. So why am I feeling helpless right now? 
I'm feeling that I don't know when this coronavirus situation is going to end. It's the unknown and I need to get my job back. I'm feeling very helpless. Okay, good. So we're getting some cognition to it, getting some understanding into it. So that's the, the think part. Then there's the feel part. So this is where we allow ourselves to feel the feeling. We allow ourselves to feel the, the, the helplessness, or in other cases, it might be sadness, anger, frustration, to, to give it permission to be in our, in our bodies, because it's, it's normal to have feeling reactions of all these kinds. That's one of the things we always wanna remind ourselves, that it's normal to have these feelings. So we, we sit with it, and as we'll do in a moment during the meditation, we breathe with it. And then there's the action part, the behavior part. So, and I'll add the word healthy behavior. There's a lot of unhealthy things we can do with our feelings. You know, you've heard of people that eat their feelings, so they overeat. Uh, not that any of us would be doing that right now. Uh, we might drink our feelings. We might drug our feelings. We might stuff our feelings. We might deny our feelings. And we certainly, all of us, avoid our feelings from time to time. So there's a lot of things that are less than healthy. Uh, and then there's a lot of things that we can do in terms of the action part that can be healthy. So for what we'll practice, one of them of meditation and sitting with the feeling, allowing it to be there. Another uh, very healthy action that we can take that's socially intelligent would be uh, to journal about the feelings, to write about it, to express it in that way. Other people might turn toward art to give the feeling a release in a symbolic way. Uh, of course, a big uh, approach will be to talk about it, so to talk about the feeling that we're having with our loved ones, to discuss it with friends and so on. And then exercise and movement uh, would be another uh, key way to express, to, to really it's less about expressing but releasing the feeling. So some of those strategies are more releasing, like exercise and art, and then some are more about uh, expressing and processing the feelings, like the discussion strategy, the journal strategy. Um, and so those, and we could go on, we could list hundreds of strategies, um, but those would just be a handful to kind of get us started. So that's one set of tools, a, a quick uh, down and dirty approach for uh, processing our feelings. But I want to share one more uh, tool before we do the meditation. And so this is the tool number two we'll call observing role models. And I want to sh share with you a, a research study. Uh, it was a, a study that randomly placed people into different groups. Uh, and they had people watch either a, a drama clip, drama clips, you know, drama movie or drama TV show like Mad Men or West Wing, or they had people watch a documentary. So a uh, documentary like on sharks for Shark Week or on how the universe works. And so after watching the different clips, these different subjects then looked at people, parts of people's faces. They looked at 36 pairs of eyes and they were asked to choose one of four emotions that would best fit those sets of eyes that they're seeing. You know, so are they seeing somebody that's jealous or panicky or uh, someone that's arrogant, someone that's being hateful? You know, what are they observing? You know, what, what feelings, what are they sensing uh, in that person? And so the results of this study were that women were more likely to identify the correct emotions. That's maybe no surprise. That's a, a stereotype and an accurate stereotype a lot of times. Uh, but both men and women had higher scores if they watched the drama clips instead of the documentary clips. Both men and women did better if they watched, in other words, if they watched people interacting with people, they watched dramas. So seeing the observations and the different social nuances and the interactions and the emotions being expressed amongst the characters, that then brought the people in those moments to be a little bit more emotionally intelligent, a little bit more socially intelligent. So that then tells me that if we bring it back to our current coronavirus situation, uh, let's observe the feelings of those in our family. Let's observe our own feelings, but let's observe the feelings of our family members. Let's try to say the right thing. Let's try to show support to one another. Let's sensing if somebody is struggling uh, or not and offering that, that empathy support uh, for them.
you know, or who in your family that maybe you're not living with outside of your immediate close quarters uh, might be struggling the most, and can we reach out to them? You know, it, you can also think of it from the role model standpoint of who in your family is the best role model of social intelligence and emotional intelligence? Who would you want to model after? Who always kind of said the right thing and was always there supportive with feelings? Is it your grandmother? Is it your father? Is it an uncle, a brother or sister, a spouse, maybe a particular friend? And what is it that they say? How, how do they seem to always say the right thing? And maybe there's something that you can model off of from them, something that we can learn from them. We know one of the best ways that we learn as human beings is through observation. So let's take the people closest in our life, maybe in your own family quarters, and learn from them. And then also we can be good role models themselves. I'll for one final example before we go to the meditation. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the models that is really important for me is one of my uh, colleagues at VIA, Donna Mayerson. And I always think of her as the, the social intelligent model, emotional intelligent model, because, you know, so many times we are at different team meetings and we're talking with people about how to, help children with character strengths, or we're trying to help um, this group of chronically ill people with their character strengths, and you know these people with a disability that are struggling. And, and so I'd be in these meetings with her and these kind of group settings with her. And every time without fail, Donna would find a way to sort of start her comments, her observations with empathy. You know, she started with that most of the time. And she would, she would say, I know you all are suffering or I know that you're struggling with this or with that or I really hear you saying this and and I know that that's really difficult right now she started with that and it's just a, it's the I think it's a hallmark of somebody that's really tuned in and emotionally intelligent that that's where they choose to start they don't start with their expertise or you know some piece of wisdom or a quote or something they start with the other person and they start with the empathy to the other person and it's that's the fairly easy way to, to make this complex strength concrete. Start with empathy. Have that be the first thing that you do and then say the stuff you want to say after that. You know, maybe you want to point out that you're upset with the person for something, but first start with empathizing with their suffering. And what could, I don't think there, it'd be a more important piece of advice when it comes to the strength than that at this, at this time that we're dealing with. Okay, so let's let's turn to a meditation then on the strength, and no surprise, it will be a, a meditation on our emotions. So as we've been doing, I want to invite you to take on a posture of strength, if you're standing like me, or if you're sitting down, so to just find strength for you as you sit here and as you place your hands and place your feet, and as you decide to keep your eyes open or closed whatever's going to feel strong for you. And I want to really invite you with this meditation to center on your breathing and to really form a strong anchor for your breath. It's really important for this meditation that you feel anchored. Your breath anchors you into this present moment. So really be there for your in-breath and be there for your out-breath. Feeling connected in this moment. And then ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? What emotion am I feeling right now? If I really listen to myself, listen to my body, listen to my heart, On the afflictive side of things, I don't like calling them negative emotions, but afflictive emotions, you might be feeling some of the cluster of 
anxiety, fear, nervousness. Or on the anger side of things, anger, frustration, aggravation, irritation. So just to name the feeling clearly. Or maybe in the sadness spectrum of sadness or disappointment. Feeling down, blue. So after you've named the feeling, now see if you can rate it on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being so unbearable and intense, and a one being you're just barely perceiving it, just barely noticing it. And I wanna challenge everybody to name one of these afflictive emotions right now. It's easy to pass over them and say, no, I just feel pretty happy right now, I'm excited. And that's true, but there's probably, if you really tune in, there's probably a tiny bit or something else. So we name that feeling, give it a number to really connect with it, to really understand it a little bit more. Why is it a two? Why is it a seven? What does a five look like? And now, see if you can locate the feeling in your body. Where is this seven in your body of anger? Where is this disappointment of three in your body? Is it in the tightness of your forehead? Is the anxiety and the beating of your heart a little bit quicker? Is there an antsiness in your stomach? Where do you notice it in your body? And wherever it is, see if you can breathe with it. Allow yourself to Bring forth the fullness of your in-breath and the fullness of your out-breath with your feeling right now. Giving your feeling space. Space to just be, without having to change it, without having to get rid of it, without running from it. Just being there with it. As if to shake its hand. invite you to bring your attention back just to your breath now, letting everything go. Knowing that you can tune in to your feelings, understand your feelings in this way. At any point that you'd like to do this practice. <laughs> 